In this video, we'll discuss a dynamic effect called the amplification factor, also known as the magnification factor. And the idea is that we've got a mass spring system, and it's being forced by a harmonic forcing function that we'll call F sub zero cosine omega t. And what we're trying to understand is the ratio or the amplification between the static deflection and the dynamic deflection, the maximum dynamic displacement. So uh, let me duplicate this mass spring system and give a bit of clarity what we're talking about. So if we take this and we, ex let's just say, put a force F0 on it, this will now deflect and here's our force that we'll call F sub zero. So in other words, if we just apply the static force, we assume that the harmonic part is out of the equation for now, and we apply the static to force, which is the amplitude F zero, this mass is going to deflect by an amount that we call delta. I'll call it capital delta sub ST, meaning the static deflection. And of course, the static deflection can just be found as delta, oops, delta st is just equal to, and this is from the spring equation, f0 divided by k. f is kx, so f over k is x. So in other words, if we just applied non-harmonic force, but a constant force, and we did it very, very slowly so that there was no dynamics in this problem, we would expect the string, the spring, which I should label has a stiffness k, to deflect by an amount delta sub st, it's delta static. And we know from previous videos, there's a link up above if you haven't seen it, that the steady state or particular solution x sub p of t is equal to capital X sub zero, some amplitude, times cosine omega t. And we'll number these equations 1 and 2. And then taking the second derivative of equation 2 with respect to time, we get x double dot, the acceleration, sub p of t is equal to minus omega squared times capital X sub 0 cosine of omega t. Call that equation 3. Uh, we then substitute 2 and 3 into equation 1, so 2 and 3 into equation 1, and we end up with, after a bit of algebra, minus omega squared m plus k times x0 times cosine of omega t is equal to the right-hand side, which is F0, F sub 0, cosine omega t. Um, rearranging this, we can rewrite it as x sub 0 divided by F sub 0, just taking the F sub 0 from the right to the left and taking this term from the left to the right or these parentheses, we get uh, 1 divided by k minus omega squared m. Of course, the cosine omega t's cancel. All right. And now, just a little trick. We're going to multiply both sides by k. Do this in green just to show it. Times k. And then we can rewrite this as x sub 0 divided by f sub 0 over k is equal to k. And out of the denominator, I'm going to remove k as a factor. So it's k into 1 minus omega squared m over k. All right, but we know what this is. That's the static deflection. And we also know what m over k is, right? Because 
Let me just do this in a different color here. Um, we know that omega n squared, the natural frequency squared, is equal to k over m. So we can rewrite this equation. Let me just give this another number. We'll call this one equation 4. We'll rewrite this as x sub 0 divided by delta static delta sub st is equal to um, the k's cancel. Do that again in yellow. And what I'm left with is 1 divided by 1 minus omega divided by omega n quantity squared, which I can also write as 1 divided by 1 minus r squared. Just fix that a bit. Oops. Shorten it. So 1 divided by 1 minus r squared, and I can write here engineers like to write things in non-dimensional terms. Um, that's why we, we're we going through this exercise. It's not a big deal now in this course, but in later courses you're going to be seeing a lot of this, this idea of non-dimensionalization of equations. So instead of talking about something in terms of the frequency, we talk about this quantity r, which is known as the reduced frequency, which is really just the ratio of the frequency to the natural frequency. All right. And this quantity here is what we call the amplification factor or the magnification factor. Let me mention that. Amplification factor. And what is it? It's the ratio between the dynamic amplitude, x0, x sub 0, and the static amplitude or the static deflection. So in other words, as a result of the fact that this is not a static problem, um, we get some sort of a amplitude of displacement x sub 0 um, that is different from delta sub st, delta static. And let me try to graph this for you. I think that will shed some light. Change it black for our axes. All right, and this axis here is x sub 0 divided by delta st. And this axis, um, we'll say, is r, which is equal to omega divided by omega n. And then you get a critical point here. I'm not doing this very straight where it's r equals 1. So this is the case of resonance, right, where omega is equal to omega n is on that dotted line. And what the graph looks like is, to it in blue, something like, oh, that's not a very good one. Let me try one more time. OK, that's better. And then on the other side, we get something that looks like this. OK, and this is the point 1. Just extend this up a little bit and down. All right, so this is worth a little bit of discussion here. Uh, I'm going to remove this omega n just so it doesn't cause confusion. And the idea is, is that if the frequency omega is equal to 0, then the static deflection and the dynamic deflection or amplitudes are identical. In other words, if the angular velocity or angular frequency is so slow that this f sub 0 cosine omega t amounts to a static force, then we'd expect it to be 1, the ratio, because the, the amplitude of the response is the same as the amplitude of the static displacement or the static displacement itself. On the other hand, as r becomes 1, we hit resonance and then we get an infinite difference, right? We, we've shown this in a previous video, the link is above, that when you get dynamic instabilities, the amplitude of each successive oscillation grows linearly. 
This doesn't just happen in one second, uh, or, or it can, depending on the frequency, but it doesn't just happen in a single oscillation, I should say. Um, but what happens is ultimately the amplitude ratio will grow infinitely big. On the other hand, down in this corner, we find that as the frequency gets very, very high, so x sub zero goes to zero. In other words, if omega is very, very, very high, much, much higher than the natural frequency of the system, the system is also almost completely unaffected by it. You might have experienced this phenomenon if you're ever in a car, especially an older car that has a rattle. You might stop at a stoplight and suddenly your, your mirrors or something starts rattling. And all you do is you rev the engine a little bit higher and suddenly the rattle goes away. Well, that's exactly this effect that you're seeing here, that the angular frequency has become so high that actually the, the amplitude magnification or the amplification factor has gone to zero. Anyway, that's all I want to say about this video. I hope you found something useful in it. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Uh, and if you did find something useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That way others can get to see it too. Or better still, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified of all future videos as they're released. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next video.